Hi. Electron are known for making powerful and complex synths, samplers, and drum machines. And then there's this, the Analog Heat Mark II, a stereo analog sound processor called by the company both an enhancer and a destroyer. It's not cheap, so is it special and worth it? Let's check it out. First, an overview. The analog heat has seven components that interoperate. An analog character engine with analog drive and dirt. A multi-mode analog filter. An analog EQ with low and high controls. A nice and comprehensive mod matrix with an envelope follower and LFO as modulation sources, as well as other external sources. All routable to multiple destinations. It has parallel processing control. A USB audio interface with MIDI ins and outs and preset controls. Now before I dive in, I want to address the differences between this and the Mark I analog heat. The sound circuits are exactly the same, except for one thing, if you plug in one mono source, it will be split both to the left and to the right. The biggest improvement is the screen. It's not just bigger, brighter, and clearer. It also presents a lot more information regarding what's going on internally with the amp, filter, envelope follower, and LFO. More on that later, let's get started with the character engine. I'll bring in multiple types of audio, let's see what it does to them. I'll start with this drum loop as an audio source. Clean boost is the most subtle of the circuits. Saturation kicks it up a notch. Electron calls this tape saturation. Since any drive also increases volume, I'm going to work throughout to set the wet level to a level as close as possible to the sound source. Let's try enhancement. It's really hard to describe audio with words, so I'll talk as little as possible. Electron calls enhancement a tube-like glow. Mid-drive does just that. By the way, I just loaded a preset so the filter and EQ knob positions don't reflect any impact on sound. We'll be trying them later. Let's move on. Again, the more we go clockwise, the more destructive the algorithms. We'll hear this with other sounds in a bit. By the way, if you like what a sound does to the bass, but not to the highs, you can play with a dry, wet mix and apply a filter a low pass filter in this case and only an apply effect to the lows or to the highs or any band you want and back to normality and like i said even the subtle clean boost sounds really nice okay let's try guitar I'm not going to talk a lot. There's an index on the left if you want to skip ahead. Let's check out the circuits on this guitar. Every time I move this knob all the way to the left, you're hearing just the dry sound. Mm -hmm. 
the amount of drive clearly has an impact on the character circuit. Let's try a different guitar riff. So this is what you can get when you start with this. Now, in addition to drive, there's also a dirt parameter, which is gain into the filter. Yeah, the last thing you want to do here is keep it clean. Yeah, so source audio and this. Really nice. Now, the digitone has been waiting patiently here to help. I thought I'd show you how the analog heat affects sine waves. Because they're the purest waveform there is, they have no harmonics on their own. Check out the harmonics added on the right, and what happens to the waveform on the left, with the various circuits of analog heat. Since any sound can be described as a bunch of sine waves at different levels, this is what the analog heat is doing to the individual units of your sound. It's not digitone, it's digitar. Okay, let's try mangling some FM sounds from Digitone. Okay, so that was the character section. Let's move on to the filter. I've got an analog sawtooth oscillator coming out of Mother 32. And the analog filter sounds like one. You will need headphones or good speakers to appreciate this. The bass here is phenomenal.
All right, I'll go through the different filter types very briefly using a noise oscillator as a source. Low pass 12 dB per octave, 6 dB per octave, Band pass, high pass, 6 dB per octave, high pass, 12 dB per octave, notch, which when modulated can be a nice phaser effect. Resonance impacts the depth of the notch. And peak, which emphasizes a particular frequency. Okay, next up in the signal chain is the EQ. All analog. And yeah, if you needed more bass, you can get that. As well as more highs from subtle to not so much. Okay, let's move on to modulation. The analog heat has quite a few modulation sources and destinations. If you're not familiar with modulation, it's basically like having someone turn knobs for you to create dynamic changes with multiple control parameters. An LFO is an example of a modulation source. Rather than you turn a knob back and forth, an LFO can do that for you, but in rather interesting ways, depending on the LFO waveform. Aside from the LFO, you have other modulation sources. We'll talk about the envelope follower, and you can also uh, input CV or MIDI to control any parameter you want. So let's check this out in action. The best way to show how an LFO works is to change pitch. So I'll change the frequency of the filter cutoff, and with resonance, it sounds like a tone. So the LFO is a source. Now I need to modulate a destination and I do that with the depth parameter. And the graph you're seeing now is the movement of the filter cutoff frequency based on this LFO. I can change the wave shape, the LFO wave shape, and listen to the filter resonance tone. It's changing based on the frequency and depth up to audio rates of the LFO. Different shapes, let's go through them quickly. Random is always fun. Now, you don't essentially need to make tones like this. For example, if I reduce the resonance, random modulation of the filter cutoff frequency is actually really nice. Now, an envelope follower is a modulation source that will change parameters for you based on audio levels. Now, the envelope follower feature is really cool. It's a little bit complex. Let me explain what's going on. The idea is to set a trigger level where if the audio passes that trigger level, and you can use the gain on the left here to fine tune it. And now, every time the audio passes a trigger level, a modulation will be triggered. Now, the reason it's a little bit tricky is because you have an envelope follower triggering an envelope modulation. But bear with me, once you get it, it's pretty simple. And the analog heat mark two is really awesome with its display because you can see what's going on. See, this little icon here on the top right will blink every time a new envelope is triggered. In this case, it's attack release envelopes. And to make it obvious, I'm gonna fire a laser every time that happens, right? So these laser sounds, are quick decay movements of a resonant filter, which happen every time there's a trigger. Now my point is obviously not to create laser sounds or to have a laser show, but again, just to explain this concept of the envelope of, your, of the audio level creating 
new envelopes which can create motions in any parameter across the system, not just filter cutoff. Again, this is just the one that's the most obvious to hear. So up until now, we've been triggering attack release envelopes. These are attack decay envelopes. An attack release envelope means that your modulation will start decaying only once your sound goes below the trigger level. Note the icon blinking every trigger. And with an attack decay envelope, the decay will start immediately following the attack motion. And the last complication, there's a follow mode, which means that as long as the audio level is above the trigger level, the modulation will mimic the sound envelope one to one. Okay, one more cool feature of the envelope follower is that you can set a filter to determine which frequency range will trigger the envelope follower. Now, let me just adjust my dry wet levels a bit. I've set my knobs to catch mode, which means I have to catch the current state of the knob, the virtual state in the preset. Here we go. Anyway, I can increase the bass frequency of what's going to the envelope follower so that only hi-hats trigger the envelope follower. So what does all this mean? The point of all this is that you can create modulations, which means change any parameter in the analog heat, drive, distortion, EQ, whatever you want, based on the level of the audio coming in, and not just the level of the audio coming in, but a certain frequency range of the audio coming in, which I think is pretty damn awesome. So up until now we've been modulating the filter, let's look at some more options. Both the envelope follower and the LFO can have three destinations. The filter cutoff point, another destination that you can set here in the menu, which can target any number of parameters on the device, same for the LFO. And then there is a mod matrix that gives you access to a third parameter, one for the envelope and another for the LFO. And as I mentioned before, control voltage and expression pedals can be modulation sources as well. So, I can't cover all the features of the analog heat, but one more that I wanted to mention um, is the frequency panning feature. Now, the idea here is that we're going to be panning the filter sweep from right to left in stereo. So, obviously, you need speakers or headphones for this. And as you can see, there's a really nice onboard display, which shows you exactly what's going on. And naturally, just like any other knob you can turn here manually, you can also set it as a destination for any modulation source. In this case, I'm using the LFO. And any LFO shape will obviously make pretty interesting drawings, but also pretty interesting sounds too. Another important component of the Analog Heat's sound design tools is its parallel processing control. Now, that's just a fancy name for this section. Usually, effects only have a dry-wet control. Right, as does this. However, since the heat often affects levels, the wet level control Makes, helps you make sure that the level of your dry signal is where you want it to be compared to the wet one. And then you can set the right mix between the two. That's a really important feature considering what I mentioned before, that you can have the analog heat only impact a certain part of the frequency spectrum, and then you still want your original sound in the other part. 
The next major feature of the analog heat that I want to talk about briefly is the fact that it's an audio interface. This means that it can be used as a VST or audio unit plugin inside a DAW. The only caveat that I have for this is that as of early July 2018, Overbridge for Analog Heat Mark II has not yet been released. If you want to see my review of that, hit subscribe and ring the YouTube notification bell, and I'll cover that when it comes out. The final feature that I want to talk about is presets. You can save all your knob positions, modulations, and presets that you can name, and then very quickly page between them. So, that's my review of the new Electron Analog Heat Mark II. Will it make your sound better? Yep, pretty much. Will it let you destroy it? That too. Do I recommend it? Yes. Should you buy it? Hopefully I've shown you enough to make the decision if the price, which isn't cheap, is worth it for you. I hope this review was helpful. If so, hit the like button if you have any questions. Hit me up in the comments section below. Subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this. Thanks for watching.